Hi there, boys and girls. Welcome to today's vodcast on blood and blood types. In our previous vodcast, you learned about the different parts of blood, which we'll quickly review in a moment. And we also learned about the heart and the vessels in the cardiovascular system. Well, blood is the third major part of the cardiovascular system, and the blood has four functions. The four functions can be easily remembered because three of them have to do with transporting or movement of materials. And then the fourth function has to do with fighting off diseases. So let's take a look at our functions. The first function we're going to talk about is the blood carries oxygen from your lungs to your body cells. So when your heart pumps the blood out of your heart, it goes out to your body cells and delivers the oxygen that it received from the lungs. In return, since your cells are using up the oxygen to make energy, carbon dioxide is a waste product. As a result, the oxygen-poor or deoxygenated blood returns to the heart, enters pulmonary circulation, goes into the lungs, and drops off the carbon dioxide into your lungs, picks up the oxygen from your lungs, and then we breathe the carbon dioxide out. So function one, carries oxygen to your body cells and brings carbon dioxide from your body cells. Function two, blood also carries other waste products from your cells to your kidneys to be removed. So your blood actually gets filtered inside of your kidneys and takes out excess salts, excess water, and urea waste. And that's how we produce urine. So urine is actually the waste product cleaned out of your blood. Our third function is that blood transports nutrients and other substances to your body. So remember, as we were saying, the blood plasma, the liquid part of your blood, is where the nutrients and other substances are floating and dissolved in so they can move out to your cells and then diffuse into your cells. So these are our three main transport or movement functions, and our last function has to do with fighting infections. So function four of the blood has cells and molecules in blood to fight infections and help heal wounds. So remember we talked about white blood cells and platelets. So as we learned in the last set of class notes for the cardiovascular system, the blood has actually four parts to it, and each part has a specific function. So the first part, are red blood cells. Red blood cells are important because they actually have a protein called hemoglobin attached to them. Now here's your blood vessel with all the red blood cells flowing around in it and here's your individual red blood cell right below. Now if we take a look, a close look at the red blood cells and take a look at the surface, we'll notice that there's a protein called hemoglobin on it. So what will happen is as your lungs diffuse oxygen into your blood, the oxygen will then go to the hemoglobin and attach to these attachment sites and then these are where the oxygen molecules are held. So your hemoglobin molecules are the structures on your blood cells that actually carry the oxygen to your cells. So that's why red blood cells carry oxygen to the cells. Next we have another type of blood cell called white blood cells and as we've learned before white blood cells fight bacteria and viruses and other foreign invaders. So if anything that gets into our body is capable of making us sick our white blood cells go and destroy it. And when we are sick, that's when your white blood cells are in action, destroying any of these pathogens that are disrupting our homeostasis and making us not feel so well. Now, we also have the liquid part of our blood because as we know, as we bleed, it's a liquid that flows out of our skin. So the liquid part of the blood is called the plasma, and it's mostly made of water. And as we said before, this is where your nutrients are dissolved in. So this is how the nutrients like sugars, amino acids, and other materials flow through the blood to get to your cells. And then lastly, we have our platelets. Our platelets are irregularly shaped cell fragments that aid in blood clotting. So when you cut yourself, the platelets actually get stuck to the ragged edges of your cut, rip open, and release chemicals that will cause the whole clotting sequence for your blood to start clotting so you can stop bleeding and then forming a scab to heal the wound. Okay, boys and girls, so let's take a look at how platelets clot the blood. When a blood vessel tears or rips, platelets crowd together at the damaged site sticking to one another and forming a small plug. The vessel constricts, slowing blood flow to the area, and the platelets release special messengers which cause clotting factors in the blood plasma to become active. These factors begin a series of chemical reactions that produce a mass of fibers at the site of the bleeding, made of a protein called fibrin. These chains form a net that traps red blood cells. The mass of fibrin and red blood cells hardens into a clot. So these are the four parts of blood. All right, so that concludes the functions of the blood and the different parts of the blood. Now, the functions of the blood and the different parts of the blood are pretty straightforward. However, when we talk about blood types, it can get a little tricky. So let's discuss the blood types now. 
In the ABO blood system, we have four different types of blood types. We have A blood, B blood, AB blood, and O blood. Now the blood types are named after proteins that are found on the cell surface, and these chemical markers are called antigens. So antigens are chemical identification tags that are on the surface of the blood cells. So for example, if we take a look at type A blood here, we'll notice that there's a specific shape on it, and it's a rectangular shape. This rectangular shape represents the A antigen, and this is the protein that the body is going to basically look at to identify whether it belongs in the body or if it's a foreign particle. If we take a look at the B blood, we'll notice that B blood type has a different antigen on it, thus making it a different blood type. And the antigen that's on the B blood is more of a triangular shape here in this diagram. Then when we get to AB blood, we'll notice that the AB blood has both the rectangles from the A and the triangles from the B, making it AB blood. And then lastly, we have the O blood. And the O blood has no surface antigens on it. So in review, our antigens determine the types of blood types. So the A blood has the A antigen. B blood has the B antigen. AB blood has both A and B antigens. And then the O blood has no antigens. Now being that our body does not like foreign invaders or foreign materials inside of it, we create these chemicals called antibodies. Antibodies are proteins that destroy foreign particles that get into your body. Whether they're bacteria, viruses, fungal spores, protozoans, etc. However, blood types are pretty tricky because certain blood types have certain antibodies. So if we take a look here, type A blood has an antibody called anti-B. Anti means against, so antibody named anti-B literally means against B. So if you're type A blood, you don't want any B blood in your body because your antibodies will destroy it. If you're type B blood, then you'll have anti-A antibodies. And these are proteins that will destroy A type blood in your system. And this could be very difficult and problematic because once you have the wrong match of blood, you can get clots all over your cardiovascular system, cutting off blood flow to certain areas and causing lots of tissue death and it leads to a lot of trouble. Now if you're type AB blood, you have no antibodies in your body. Because if you did have an anti-A or anti-B, it would destroy your own cells. So AB blood types do not have any antibodies present in them. And then lastly, we have O blood. Now as we said before, O blood has no antigens on the surface, so as a result, they're going to have both antibodies. They're going to have both anti-A to destroy anything with A blood, and they're going to have anti-B to destroy anything with B blood in it. And antibodies work like this. Here we have a red blood cell with, with a particular antigen on it, and it's a round shape. Now this blood cell has been placed into a body where the blood types don't match. And as a result, the antibodies are going to attach themselves to the blood cells. When the antibodies attach themselves to the blood cell, the body will then destroy those cells because the antibody is marking it for destruction. So your body is going to destroy those red blood cells causing all those problems in the cardiovascular system. So when matching up the blood types, you want to be very careful based on the type of surface antigens that are present on the blood cells and the types of antibodies that they carry. So let's go over the different types of blood that can be donated and received by different types of people. Now an individual with A blood is obviously going to be able to accept A type blood. It's the same surface antigen, so it's not going to be a problem. The body won't mark it as foreign and it won't destroy it. However, there is a second type of blood it can receive, and that's O blood. And if you're wondering how come O blood is okay, well let's take a look at the O blood down here in the corner again. If we take a look at the cell surface of the O type blood, you'll notice that there are no surface antigens on it. There's no A or B on it. So the body isn't going to be able to detect it and determine whether it's foreign or not. So it's almost as if the O blood is invisible because it has no proteins on it. O blood can be received by an A blood type person. When we talk about B blood types, B blood types can also receive B, again, same surface protein or antigen, and they can receive O for the same purpose. The host antibodies won't find any antigens to bind onto, so they won't destroy the cells. Now, if we take a look at the AB blood type, we'll notice that they have no antibodies. This means that they have no chemicals to destroy any kind of blood type that they get. As a result, not only can they receive type AB blood, and as we've been saying, type O blood, but they can receive type A, and they can also receive type B. Now being that AB blood types can receive all four kinds of blood, 
these people are known as universal recipients. Universal meaning everything, and recipients meaning receiving. So they can receive everything. And lastly, if we take a look at O, O isn't as friendly or is as good as having AB blood. Because if we take a look at the O blood again, we have anti-A antibodies, and we have anti-B antibodies. Which means anything with an A antigen or a B antigen on it will be destroyed by the body. So as a result, if a person has O blood, the only type of blood that they can receive is O. So that's how blood typing works. So that concludes tonight's podcast, boys and girls. Thank you for your time.